Almost on max. Benda, please test. Hi, Charity. Oh, okay, we, we will test you now, eh? We are calling you now. Okay, we are testing you now. They're trying to rip off your dress, Tati. Well, please see. Bum Kasi. What's it with them? Yeah, I can hear you. As you would didn't give a big drop, ne? Hello. Can you hear me? Ms. Moya, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you 100% clearly. Okay. We're just going to need you to move a bit back. So you can sort of fit in the frame like this slightly back again no 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 you're moving to the side now uh i need you to move no now you've gone i'm gone <laughs> no, no, no. i'm trying to put it on the screen okay penda is that fine can you see? are you able to move slightly back There we go. That is fine. That is perfect. Ms. Moya, you're speaking. And the voice. Sorry. And the voice is okay. Yes, the voice is also fine. Can you okay. hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly. Yes. Hundred percent. Ma'am, you're speaking to Tio Ishuna. I am the presenter. Who will be conducting our interview today. Good. How are you faring so far during the lockdown? Uh, we're just trying to handle all the stresses from the businesses, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> oh, that, that, that definitely goes without saying. All right, we're just going to test really another tough. Skype uh, connection that we're going to have with another interview. But uh, we'll just need you to stay online for us. Yes, ma'am? Okay. I'm not sure. Like a static sound. Yes, but um, may I know? Maybe you can just ask the producer, Lahia, just to text her to put her phone on flight mode and that. Because it like it's likely just a phone. Yeah. Because I could see she was playing with something in her hands. Yeah. Sama, um, fix fix the wig of it there. Let's see if it's balanced properly. Yeah. It was it was slightly. That's me, man. The women at the office used to hate me. But now they love me. No, I'm too observant. We are, but but very few of us actually But I don't have Dr. Mutia. Good afternoon. How are you doing today, sir? Good. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thanks. We just wanted to test the connection. Uh, can you hear us clearly? I can hear you clearly. Hundred percent. You don't perhaps have any of your devices close by that are on, because we're just gonna need to have them on silence. Yeah, this or, one will be on uh, flight mode. Now. Or on flight mode, so that they do not interfere with uh, the connectivity. Perfect. Hundred percent. Thank you so much, sir. We will be in touch. Thank you. 
Um, who's Dr. Mundia? Huh? Skype interviews you. I can hear you. I can hear you. But can you hear me? I can see, I love them. But, but I need you to listen to me. Benda, you're not listening. Guys.
Hello and welcome to this midday edition of the news on NBC. I'm Thierry Shuna alongside Selma Moses, your sign language interpreter for this bulletin. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin with the headlines. Foreigners who wish to leave Namibia warned they will not be allowed back should they be denied entry to the destination countries. Residents of Impala Island in Zambezi region happy with government's interventions to curb the spread of the coronavirus. And in international news, Eswatini's Prime Minister Ambrose Lambini urges all Amaswati to abide by the partial lockdown as of the 27th of March. Leading this bulletin. Foreign nationals who wish to depart from Namibia may do so, but will not be allowed entry back into Namibia should they be denied entry into their destination countries. This was announced by the Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration in a media statement availed to NAMPA as part of the travelling measures put in place by Namibia to prevent the further spread of COVID-19. The statement says any Namibian or permanent resident who departs from the country but is denied entry into the country of destination will be subjected to a mandatory quarantine at their own cost. No exit from the country will be facilitated without prior permission to do so and permission to travel will only be granted for essential travel, says the statement. Application forms are available at the counters, border posts and may be requested via email at coid19 at mha.gov.na. In addition to border posts that were closed as per cabinet directive, the statement notes that Oranyamund, Senderlings Drift, Klein Manase, Fields Drift and Mata Mata border posts will temporarily be closed for three months to correspond with the decision of the Republic of South Africa. We are now joined on the line by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security Executive Director, Etienne Maritz. Good afternoon, Mr. Maritz, and thank you so much for making the time to join us. Good afternoon, Theo, and thank you for having me on the program. First things first, take us through the measures the Ministry has put in place as part of the state of emergency and lockdown. Okay, I, we have released those measures as part of the press release. And uh, we have also requested that all the regional offices will display it uh, through a notice to the members of the public. But in essence, first of all, I think immigration services are still open, but at a reduced scale. It means there would be less immigration offices at those border posts that have been closed. All civil registration services are suspended except for birth registration of newborn babies, mm -hmm. and then also the registration of deaths that are now occurring. We also, in relation to the refugee management, we have also suspended services, except those that um, is in, are involved in the facilitation of movement out of city refugee settlement for emergencies such as funerals of close family members, medical care, and accessing banking services. Now, Mr. Maris, there have been and may still be cases coming of Namibians denied entry into the country and subjected to a mandatory quarantine. Who is to pay for the cost of that specific exercise? Okay. First of all, we... At the Ministry of, of Home Affairs, we are not aware of any Namibians that have been denied entry into Namibia. Mm -hmm. I think if you are aware of instances of this nature, then uh, we must be notified immediately, and then we can deal with it on a case-to-case -case basis. Case basis. Mm -hmm. As per the decision of Cabinet, and also as set out in the regulation, made pursuant to the proclamation of the state of emergency, all Namibians are welcome back home. But of course, they will be subjected to the mandatory quarantine. The quarantine is handled by the Ministry of Health and Social Services. So in terms of the cost, I think it's best to follow up with that ministry. 
So as it stands at the moment, what is the situation at the borders? Have there been any instances of travelers coming in without the necessary documentation or trying to enter the country based on some sort of prior approval? There, there were some instances, but uh, in those cases, the traveler will be returned. I think even in a state of emergency, people must travel with the necessary documentation. You need to have your passport with you. Now, with the declaration of the state of emergency, the visas and the permits issued earlier are all suspended. So travelers may not rely on a previously issued employment permit or a tourist visa to enter the country. And maybe those are the cases that have been referred back to the country. Now, you mentioned earlier with regards to emergency cases. Well, I mean, you will get certain cases where someone might have to travel because of health reasons or, or for something or like. How can people acquire travel certificates for those specific emergency cases? First of all, there should not be any cases where people use travel certificates. Um, our offices are still open to issue um, passports in emergency cases, so it is possible to apply for an emergency passport and it will be issued. And uh, then for Namibians and permanent resident holders seeking to depart from Namibia, of course they need to obtain permission mm -hmm. and uh, there is a form that they need to complete and uh, we at the Ministry of Home Affairs or Health and Social Services will then approve that and then they can continue. I just want to emphasize that non-essential travel will definitely not be allowed. Fully understood. How many of the movie's borders are presently closed, just for clarity? I, I would like to focus rather on, on those open, mm -hmm. because all of our borders are closed with the exception of the following. Okay. Oshikango, Katima Molilo, Transkalari, North Uber, Balthus by Harbor, Ariam Plain, and then of course the two airports, Usia Kutako International Airport and Balthus by Airport. And all of these borders are open for commercial goods and cargo. And therefore, any Namibian or permanent resident holder that show up at any of these ports of entry would be allowed in. We also want to advise Namibians returning to actually make use of the airport. You may be coming at one of the borders, and the problem might not be on the Namibian side. I know that South Africa has closed its borders, so it is not even possible for you to come to Namibia mm -hmm. because they won't allow you through. So if you make use of, of the, um, the ports of entry that I have mentioned, there shouldn't be any problems. Now, Mr. Maruch, lastly, just before we let you go, just for those borders that are open, are our borders capacitated in terms of screening equipment and, of course, then human capacity? Of course. Screening is being handled by the Ministry of Health and Social Services, and I think they would be in a better position to speak um, to the availability of equipment. Mm -hmm. In terms of human resources, from our side, the Ministry of Home Affairs, immigration officers are on duty and uh, they are manning all the border posts and they are ensuring the smooth entry and exit of people and then most importantly the cargo that is coming in and out of our country. Well, Mr. Maris, thank you so much once again for making the time to join us. Thank you very much for having me on the program and a good day to you and the listeners. Thank you so much, sir. Well, there you have it. That was the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security Executive Director Etienne Maritz just talking to us and giving us a brief outline on what the current measures that are, have been put in place specifically by the Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration and Safety and Security, specifically during this lockdown and, of course, then the state of emergency period. Moving over to the Zambezi region. Residents of Impalila Island in the Kabe South constituency of the Zambezi region are happy that government has answered their plight to close the country's borders as precautionary measure to curbing the spread of COVID-19. Government has released the Kapelwa Kabaljani ferry boat that has been stationed at Katima Mulilo since 2010 to assist those in the floodplain areas of the region and of course then moving to and from the island. Earlier in the week, the chairperson of Impalila Village Development Committee, Brian Kalonda, appealed for government assistance 
in helping the people of the island buy necessities from Katimamdilo. This came after Botswana and Zambia closed their borders to foreign nationals. Travelers whom our news team spoke to expressed satisfaction with government reaction during this trying time. We are very thankful to have this boat that will help taking people from Katimamrilo to Impalila, Kasika and Balasinte, as well as other flooded areas. Government need to continue assisting vulnerable people in the same manner. They say the boat will relieve them from the threat of canoes capsizing, as well as taking pressure off smaller boats that are expected to travel more than 100 kilometers per single trip. I am tendering my appreciation to the government for listening to the plight of us living on the island of Impalila and rescuing us from this difficult situation we find ourselves in. We used to buy our basic necessities in Botswana and Zambia, but all border posts are closed. We were stranded, not knowing how to survive. I am very thankful to the Namibian government. Kabe South Councillor John Likando accompanied the first group who were logged in at Katimamdilo to Impalila. So now the ferry, a lot of people who were locked here in Katima to Impalila. Then from Impalila we have another route where those who necessarily need to come and buy their food, fuel and other essential, including medication, will be ferried from Impalila with a special route to Ngoma. We'll give the whole set to once we've discussed in detail with the Indunas. Residents of Impalila, especially during flooding periods such as now, may only travel to Katimamrilo via the two neighboring countries or buy food and other necessities from Kasani Boswana or Mambova in Zambia. The border closures have made an already vulnerable situation at Impalila Island West. Sidilom Viana, NBC News, Katimamrilo. The Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in Vintuk has had to take in 10 animals from pet owners amidst fears that domestic animals could carry the COVID-19 virus. The SPCA says since the lockdown was declared, 10 pet owners have thus far surrendered their animals to them, fearing that their pets might carry or pass on the new coronavirus. Branch manager Sylvia Breitenstein says this leaves the SPCA with no choice but to take in the animals, especially if they are vaccinated and healthy. Personally, I think those fears are not warranted, but um, if, they, if the owners are scared of their animals, it's no use leaving the animals in their homes. You know, then they might not feed them or they might throw them away or something. So when the owners are afraid, we just take them in. The SPCA is also on lockdown, but the organization continues to take care of animals already kept there, although they do not currently give out any animals. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, coronaviruses are a large family of viruses, with some causing illness in people and others in certain types of animals. Coronaviruses that infect animals can also infect people, but according to the CDC, such cases are rare. At the moment, there's no exact source determined for the current outbreak of COVID-19. The CDC also says there's currently no evidence that companion animals, including pets, can spread COVID-19. The SPCA advises pet owners to follow general hygiene rules when it comes to pet care. This includes keeping the animals and their surroundings clean, keeping your pet free from parasites like worms, ticks and fleas, and constantly washing hands after handling a pet. The current lockdown will also allow pet owners to bond with their animals. And the SPCA says companion animals especially are good for one's psychological well-being. Pets lower your blood pressure, that's proven. You're going to have three weeks now where you can spend time with your animals, get to know them, build a relationship with them. I think it's going to be fun. And I think people are going to have a much better appreciation of their pets after this. Francis Shahama, NBC News, Ventuk. 
While government comes to grips with the emergence of the novel coronavirus, closing border posts as a preventative measure, the Namibian Chamber of Commerce and Industry met to strategize and assess the impact of the outbreak in terms of trade. Now, in line with that goal, the NCCI has established a private sector COVID-19 task team. Now, to shed more light on this, we are now joined via Skype by the NCCI Chief Executive Officer, Charity Muir. Good afternoon, Ms. Muir, and thank you so much for making the time to join us. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Well, perhaps you can just provide us with a bit more clarity on what is the role going to be of this private sector COVID-19 task team? Well, um, this task force is actually um, comprised of representatives from various uh, private sector uh, associations, okay. and it was actually uh, established by the Line Ministry of Trade, basically for us to be able to um, provide uh, advice and uh, information to government regarding uh, challenges that are facing uh, the business community during uh, this, this period, mm -hmm. and also to submit proposals in terms of um, rescue plan that um, would actually be able to assist the businesses during this time and after uh, COVID, but also to be able to mobilize private sector support, particularly to our informal sectors during this time. Now, in terms of providing advice to government, can you perhaps just share with us some of the recommendations that your task team has currently made? Um, as you would know that obviously this pandemic is actually a, 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 a very serious one that probably has never been experienced in the history of the country. Um, so um, a lot of businesses have actually been seriously impacted. And what you are proposing to government is what um, interventions can government be able to bring to the table to really make sure that we can keep the economy going during and after uh, COVID. So some of the proposals that we have put in there specifically was really to look at issues of, you know, uh, uh, um, long holidays uh, for those that have actually financial commitments with commercial banks mm -hmm. and um, to look also look at uh, issues of maybe um, uh, tax relief but also um, in terms of also interventions, because doing business in Namibia is quite a, a cost exercise. Mm -hmm. Also to engage in terms of how we can actually reduce the cost of doing business. That is from issues of you know reducing the, 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 the cost of the import payments for those that are exporters, also to uh, issues of um, the rate of utilities, that is electricity and water, but also how can we make sure that now we will seriously pay attention to growth at home. I think through this whole recession, one thing that has really taught us a lesson is that you know, it is very important for every Namibian to be able to support local mm -hmm. products, to support local businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think the issue of local procurement actually features high on our agenda that is particularly time irrespective that we have to really pay attention seriously to be able to resuscitate our economic activities and also to bring a lot of innovation to business because I think this recession what it has taught a lot of business is also how they can also become more innovative. I have seen especially from the, the hospitality sector, I mean the, the restaurants mm -hmm. had a delivery service because of this situation now that even now uh, incorporated that in their business as you know continuity to be able to provide you know delivery services. So um, there are a lot of other um, proposals that we have put forward, and we are very hopeful that government at least will meet us halfway. Also, the issues of um, no outstanding invoices, you know, uh, Namibian businesses have also, in addition to COVID, we have previously been enduring um, consecutive years of a recession. So businesses are already distressed, you know, COVID right. coming actually, actually makes it worse. So... At that time, we had already issues of um, late payment of invoices, also late payment in terms of VAT returns. And those issues, we are saying that when government actually procures, they must make sure that they make sure that they also pay the businesses in time so that they're able to continue with their operations. Well, we are definitely um, of, or in support of supporting our local businesses. And of course, but just briefly, on your part of the private sector discussions with your task team, um, have there been any uh, discussions with regards to how then the private sector can also then assist government with regards to other financial assistance or even uh, support in other means uh, during this specific period? Yes, I think 
think Namibians generally are known for their generosity in terms of any natural disaster. We have seen it also in the past when we had floods, when we had a drought, that businesses always had came and actually made sure that they provided support to government. Mm -hmm. Same applies in these situations. We've had already businesses that are trying to make sure that they also assist government. That is from providing really, um, you know, provision of sanitation and water to our informal settlements, mm -hmm. you know, preparing also the quarantine facilities. COVID is here whether we like it or not, and we don't want to find ourselves unprepared. So we have made proposals in terms of really identifying facilities that can also be prepared and we mobilize businesses mm -hmm. to ensure that they are able to provide you know, support and to make sure that those facilities are well equipped. I'm actually happy to 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 also uh, learn that uh, some of our businesses, particularly in the Oshana region, they just called me just before this interview, that they have also been mobilizing with the regional governor there and also identifying facilities where they'll make sure that they're able to you know, prepare those facilities as quarantine facilities, but also mobilizing the private sector in terms of really offering, because you would know, you saw already yesterday, we have people that do not even have homes, we have people that do not even have enough food to eat, so we are mobilizing all also in terms of food and items, hygiene essentials, so that we are able to support our informal settlement. This is very critical. So we call this on all Namibians to ensure that everybody comes out in their numbers, whether it's at individual or businesses, to really support this cause. And those can really contact me directly in how to mobilize those incentives. Uh, thank you so much once again for making the time to join us. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. That was Charity Mwia, the CEO of the Namibia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, just briefly talking to us about the NCCI private sector COVID-19 task force that has been established. And of course, then just touching on some of the recommendations that they have made to government. Moving over to the south. Civic organizations, political parties and local authorities in the Karas region have embarked on a hand sanitizing awareness campaign in the Kitmansu of informal settlements. This is Ileni, the largest informal settlement in the region, home to nearly 1,200 migrants awaiting formal relocation. There is limited basic services, such as portable water, which if not addressed may make personal hygiene impossible. Water tanks installed recently by the Kietmansuk municipality in the informal settlement was one of a few measures meant to curb the spread of COVID-19, but they are empty now. Mayakau Densha Krona is not happy. Please discipline the children not to come and play at the tanks, not to waste the water, and also not to drink the water. Political parties are also bringing their part in helping vulnerable members of society. We also, because we are having the responsibility, we also feel obliged to fight together with the government, to meet the government halfway. Kietmans, who former mayor and businessman Bessel Brown, donated some soaps and other cleaning material to residents. More than 90% of the people here in this informal settlement totally, totally unemployed. And the poverty you can see, there's no electricity, there's no toilets. We cleaned up here for the whole week. Now, more than ever before, our obedience are being really challenged. We have to listen to our leaders, to the people who know what is happening. We managed to give out 500 bottles of and sanitizer, our own mix, and 500 small bars of soap. Residents are urged to wash their hands frequently and maintain personal hygiene. Not Tang with Jimmy NBC News, Kiet Manswap. Following the temporary travel restrictions imposed for Namibian citizens and permanent residents as a measure to strengthen the country's preparedness and response to the COVID-19 outbreak, we now share the emails of the Trade Ministry officials to contact for certification of companies as essential and crucial service providers.
regional leadership of Hardab addressed a media conference to clarify the issue of Namibians being quarantined at one of the Namibia wildlife resorts. The regional health director, Yvonne Stefanis, explained that the 40 Namibians were screened and are currently receiving counselling and support from social workers and nurses. She further advised the public to stay away from the dam as it is off limits during the quarantine period of 14 days. At, at this stage, I think it is important that we differentiate between a quarantine place and an isolation place. Because isolation is where we intend to keep those who are infected with the disease. Quarantine is for those that have come home, whom we just want to keep aside and monitor them before we can hear them for them to go home. At the same conference, Hartab Governor Esmi Isak briefed the media about preventative measures put in place since the outbreak of COVID-19. The coordinating committee, which is also responsible for resource mobilization, is engaging the private sector in the Hartab region to support government efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19. Furthermore, local authorities have been directed that no water must be cut for the duration of the state of emergency and that water must be reconnected. Meetings have been held with Sabine owners and business people to sensitize them on the risk and they have been urged to implement precautionary measures. Isolation facilities have been identified at Aranos as well as Kai Ganahab Vocational Training Center outside of Marintal. Please, dear inhabitants of Hartab region and Namibian nation, nation, remain calm and cooperate with the personnel assigned to the task teams. As the coronavirus lockdown kicked off in the Rongo region, the office of the Walfish Bay Urban Constituency Council donated protective gear to media practitioners. Journalists spoken to by the NBC say they feel safer and more motivated to execute their duties given the donation of equipment, while others raised concern that some community members still do not fully grasp the meaning of the lockdown. Protective gear donated includes protective suits, gloves and face masks, as well as hand sanitizers. We got our protecting gear today, which I'm really happy about because I was also quite a bit worried. Even my family were worried because, you know, I go out there, work with people, and when I come home, I have to be in touch with them. So people have been calling me, uh, my family have been calling me, asking me, what's going to happen to you guys because you are out there. So now we feel a bit safer. Um, we feel more safe. But what we have found is that um, there's still a lot of people that seemingly do not understand what the lockdown uh, directive means because it means that we have to stay inside the house apart from essential services like the media, like the police, like electricians and so on and the nurses and the uh, health staff. And uh, in case uh, the virus really does uh, come to Valfus Bay, then uh, I'm sure that as media practitioners, we will change the way we do news. We will uh, most probably be doing news through our cell phones and through Skype. Chairperson of the Disaster and Risk Management Committee at the Valfus Bay Regional Council, Noli Chipinge, pointed out that more awareness campaigns are needed to alert the public about the dangers of the coronavirus. The medias are very important stakeholders actually um, since they are actually the communication link between um, the community members and various stakeholders, whether it's the health sector or non-health sectors, and then also just to share information reaching um, nationally as well as internationally. So with that, we saw the need actually of um, ensuring they are well protected since they come in contact with various um, people. We just did the little that we can um, with all thanks to the sponsorship we received from Paleo Doba, of which um, they actually uh, understood our vision and they came on board to ensure that this is uh, this actually reached you as journalist. Elvis Mboya, NBC News, Valfus Bay. And that then brings us to the end of the news at this hour. From myself, Tio Ishuna, Selma Moses and the rest of the crew, thank you so much for tuning in. Please continue to follow the current regulations set in place during the state of emergency. Stay home, stay safe, and until next time, it's cheers for now.